Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines, the latest on a crash involving a San Antonio police officer and a robbery suspect that happened during a pursuit on the southwest side. Plus, the U.S. has hit a record number of coronavirus hospitalizations and surpassed 1 million new confirmed cases in just the first 10 days of November. Little cool front yesterday, a little bit cooler out there this morning. Uh, probably drier air is really helping us out. Mike is in with your Wednesday forecast. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, November 11th. Glad you are with us. Big day around here. We, of course, all morning long will be saluting our veterans on Veterans Day, but also happens to be the birthday of one of our GMSA family. We'll talk to him in just a second. Yeah, it's Marcus's birthday. Marcus That's is right. birthday. But yes, now, but Mike, talk to Mike. <laughs> yes, Mike, good morning to you. It is very pleasant out there. Now, it's not as cool yet, yeah, but uh, it still feels better with the, the lower humidity. A lot better. So, yeah, yeah, yeah a whole lot it. better. Uh, it's not going to last all that long, unfortunately, because the humidity will start to return. Actually, in parts of the hill country may start to return a little bit by this afternoon, but let's just enjoy uh, the moment out there. And we've got a couple of clouds um, about four or 5,000 feet up there. So that may try to act like a little bit of a blanket and not let us get as cool as what we could get. I'm still looking at uh, uh, mid 50s by the time it's all said and done. We got some 40s on the hill country. It's darn chilly out there in comfort at 46 degrees, 54 in Valverde, 57 Port SA right now. And yeah, very, very dry air. Two points drop down. Oh gosh, about um, 25, almost 30 degrees compared to yesterday after that uh, weak front moved on through here. Mole is on the low side this morning and and throughout the rest of today. Like I said, I'm kind of going on a little bit of a limb, going on a limb here, 54 degrees uh, by later on this morning. So we'll continue to cool down the next couple of hours and then things are going to be warming up very nicely. 80 for a high temperature. So we are going to be on the warm side of things later on today and we're going to be staying right around the maybe a little bit warmer going in toward the weekend. Another front, a little more potent coming in next week. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is the birthday boy himself. We already all sang to him as well. Oh, well, thank you very much, and that was a great way to start the morning. Right now, as we take a look at the uh, roadways, here's another great way to start the morning. Uh, even if it's not your birthday, uh, here's your birthday present. Uh, no accidents right now as you hit the roadway. So things still looking pretty good out there. Let's see, I-10, Days of Allah, eastbound and westbound lane so far. No issues there, and when we scroll over to some other areas, you can see that traffic's still light, but still very early. The roads are dry, so just make sure you buckle up as you head out this morning. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. A San Antonio police officer and a juvenile suspect are in the hospital this morning after crashing into each other during a robbery chase last night on the southwest side. That juvenile suspect is in critical condition and the officer is in stable condition. Our Sarah Costa is live from downtown on how this happened. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and it started with two juvenile girls. They were in a parking lot when one of them stole the other's truck and the other one broke the broke her leg trying to get the truck from her. That's when police were called out to the 1900 block of Couples Road around 830 last night for an assault in progress. The victim's leg was broken as she tried to keep the suspect from taking her truck. Officers spotted the truck on Rose Lawn Road and attempted a traffic stop. The suspect in the vehicle did not stop and the supervisor authorized the officer to pursue the truck, police say. Officers chased the truck down to the intersection of Couples Road. The pursuit ended at Old Pearsall Road in West Military when the suspect crashed into a responding officer head, heading down the opposite way of traffic, police say. Now, officials do not know the relationship between the juvenile victim and the suspect. And like you guys said earlier, that officer is expected to be OK. He has non life threatening injuries in the hospital as he recovers this morning. However, that juvenile suspect is still in critical condition. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. One man was shot twice last night before making it out of an apartment. It happened at a complex on Borderbrook just before 8 p.m., not too far from Ingram Park Mall on the west side. Police say the man was shot in the stomach and shoulder. He was taken to the hospital, but police are having a hard time identifying a suspect in this case. New overnight Democrats in Washington have clinched two more years of controlling the House. 
but with a potentially razor-thin majority. The Associated Press reporting the party nailed down at least 218 seats late last night and could win a few others when more votes are counted. While that assures command of the 435-member chamber, an unforeseen surge of Republican voters transformed expected gains of perhaps 15 seats into losses. By retaining the House, Democrats will control the chamber for four consecutive years for only the second time since 1995. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierenberg is remaining in quarantine this morning after, after testing negative following a possible COVID-19 exposure. In a response, the mayor said, quote, I will remain quarantined per public health guidance, end quote. He asked that everyone continue to do their best to keep the virus from spreading. Nierenberg has been tested about seven times in the past few months out of precaution. Meanwhile, Bear County reporting more than 300 new COVID cases, our seven day average up to 239. That's another increase since the day before yesterday. No new deaths were reported. 306 COVID-19 patients are currently in area hospitals. 435 right now nationwide, nearly 62,000 people are in the hospital with COVID-19 right now. And that's more people in the hospital than at any other time since the pandemic began. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details. This morning, ICUs across the country say they're crippled by a crush of patients as pandemic-related hospitalizations hit an all-time high. We need help. We're short nurses. New data revealing 40% more people are now hospitalized with COVID than just two weeks ago. They're absolutely just overwhelmed. It's been insane. It's been this is what we were fearing. Massachusetts is now preparing field hospitals. California is rolling back reopenings. And Vermont is requiring all travelers to quarantine even if they test negative. Despite new efforts to control the spread, the U.S. on Tuesday saw its highest number of daily cases ever, with more than 130,000. All 50 states are now reporting infections on the rise. Texas now seeing nearly 11,000 new cases per day. Wisconsin is seeing positivity rates tick past 30 percent. Doctors in the state saying new cases have quadrupled and patients are sicker than ever. We're having to employ more advanced um, therapies for people on ventilators. Major sports programs are also feeling the effects of the latest surge. Texas A&M and Auburn football teams are reporting dozens of new cases derailing the season. On the front lines, workers are fearing the worst as we hit the height of flu season. I don't know. Are we going to have enough rooms? Are we going to have enough vents? I don't know. But White House officials say help is on the horizon. So I would say by April you'll be able to be vaccinated. The government says it's ready to distribute 20 million doses of the vaccine as soon as it's approved. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. All right now it's 437, 64 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, murder hornets are back in the headlines. Why some are worried about how many were recently found in Washington state. And next, why some legal analysts say the Affordable Care Act may survive a challenge in the U.S. Supreme Court despite a conservative majority. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a cool 64 degrees, less humidity. We'll take it. Uh, Mike says it's not going to last long, so we're going to check in with him in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. It's 440. The U.S. Supreme Court hearing arguments over the Affordable Care Act. Trump administration lawyers and GOP state attorneys general say a 2017 congressional amendment that eliminates the penalty for failing to get insurance invalidates the law altogether. Lawyers supporting the ACA say Obamacare can survive without that mandate. Chief Justice John Roberts appears to agree with the latter. Justice Brett Kavanaugh, a Trump appointee, also says the act could survive if the amendment were removed. Legal analysts say comments like these make it appear that the Affordable Care Act is not in critical condition. Fort Hood is planning to build a memorial gate in honor of Specialist Vanessa Guillen. The 20-year-old Army Specialist disappeared back in April. Her remains were found in a shallow grave on June 30th. Fort Hood's commanding general invited the Guillen family to discuss and review the gate's design and concepts. The military base chose to honor Guillen with the gate that leads to the 3rd Cavalry Regiment where she served. Guillen was bludgeoned to death by Specialist Aaron Robinson, who killed himself on July 1st as police were trying to take him into custody. 
Officials in Tennessee have, uh, say a Tennessee man is free after spending almost 15 years in prison for a murder he did not commit. Late yesterday, a judge overturned Joseph Webster's murder conviction. Webster received a life sentence for a murder in 1998, but state prosecutors and Webster's attorney found new evidence in the case and agreed Webster is not guilty of the murder. They say the evidence was not presented to a jury at the time of his trial and indicates someone else was the actual killer. And time now is 442 and 64 degrees. Tell head why murder hornets are back in the news after a nest was found up in Washington State. Plus, we're going to give you a first look at some of the best Black Friday ads because you may not want to wait to snag these good deals. And welcome back. It is 445. New concerns this morning about the nest of murder hornets found in Washington State after learning how many were found. ABC's Kenny Kena Whitworth has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details from inside the murder hornet's nest. Experts making some surprising discoveries after eradicating the first Asian giant hornet nest in the U.S. Splitting open this tree and finding the nest to be 14 inches long. Inside, more than 500 of the so-called murder hornets, some of them still alive. They survived the scientists' initial efforts to kill them with carbon dioxide. Perhaps most chilling of all, they found as many as 200 queens in various stages of development. It really seems like we uh, got there just in the nick of time. If any queens had already left the nest, uh, it was just a few and very early. So. What exactly does that many queens mean? We'll tell you what the experts are saying coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Los Angeles. From virtual shopping carts to curbside pickup, Black Friday is bound to be different this year. Retailers are not even waiting for the pumpkin pie to roll out their holiday deals. 12 on your side, it's Marilyn Moritz on where to get a sneak peek and the ads and why you won't want to procrastinate. Black Friday, forget door busting. This year, online sales are expected to be record busting. 25 to 35% higher than last year, according to Deloitte's research, and tis the season now. Getting a head start is so important this year because some deals have already begun. Walmart is already having Black Friday deals for days with curbside pickup. Target is offering month-long deals, extending its price match guarantee through Christmas Eve. Best Buy and Amazon are in on the action too. So how do you find the deals for now and later? Shop the ads. Macy's dropped its big Black Friday ad today. And if an Instant Pot is on your holiday list, here's one for $80 off. Lowe's, Microsoft, Academy, the ads and sales are out there. To find them, check out websites like bestblackfriday.com, theblackfriday.com, and dealnews.com. Another reason to shop early? What's being dubbed ship again. With holiday shopping on top of the widespread shift to online shopping during the pandemic, shipping companies are going to be totally overwhelmed. Seems this year when it comes to holiday shopping, if you're not early, you might be late. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 447. Let's go ahead and check traffic with the birthday person. Do we do we call him birthday boy for every single <laughs> toss to time saver traffic? Are you going to be OK with that? OK. OK. <laughs> OK. <All> right. <laughs> right now, I've been called much worse. Right now, 21 in Grayson. No issues on the north or the southbound lanes all the way through 21 there at the quarry. So that's great news. Not too many folks out there. It is still early. And that uh, 281 area right there by Hildebrand, that long turn and curb. So far, roads are dry, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue in 35 at Pine. So far, no problems. Marcus, for some perspective, how many birthdays have we celebrated with you now here on GMSA, roughly? Actually, this makes the 14th. Wow. Very cool. That's the 14th, yeah. but the last. The 14th, but and the last. And welcome to the club, by the way. Yes. Which club? <laughs> 50. He's it. You're 50 today? I'm 50. Oh my gosh, I totally didn't see that one coming. I guess just because we've worked Aww. together so long. Well, because you guys are used to me being the youngest one in the room. I was going to say, because he, he, he has those boyish good looks. Uh huh. And now, of course, Stephanie's the youngest one and the yes. best looking by, one in the room. So by by a mile on both counts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Beautiful view. This was uh, from yesterday. We still had a few uh, clouds hanging around here and that nice orange glow right there along the, uh, the horizon. We do have a couple of clouds hanging around this morning. Um, and they're not really thick, 
thickening up too much or it's not a complete cloud cover may act like a little bit of a blanket though as far as trying to hold temperatures up but dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere yes it was very humid before that front moved through these numbers have dropped down 24 uh, up in junction 30 degrees from this time yesterday. That's how much drier the air is yesterday with two points well down into the 40s. So with this situation, we do have a fairly light breeze out there that would allow temperatures to continue to drop down. We're in the mid 60s right now here in town. The one little, like I said, iffy thing is that cloud cover. Clouds like to act like a bit of a blanket. It's not a complete cloud cover, but it may be enough to prevent us from getting as cool as what we could get. The interesting thing, though, is this won't last long because look at how the uh, humidity and dew points start to come back up here in the mid to upper 50s and even low 60s by later on uh, this afternoon. Then tomorrow morning, it's going to be a whole different situation. We are going instead of about 24 degrees lower in dew points, going to be about 24 degrees higher in dew points compared to this morning. And that's going to be the situation on in through the weekend. So it does look like it's going to be a warm and humid weekend. But by the first of the week, boy, these things drop down once again, just plummet with another fairly potent front moving on through here. And that's going to be sometime during the day on Monday. So with the low clouds, you can see maybe just a few of them trying to show up in this uh, satellite picture. And then around the country, a lot of rain off to the east of us, but once again, there's not a heck of a lot and not a heck of a lot upstream as far as we are concerned. So we will see um, just temperatures kind of staying on the warmer side, right about 80. Humidity is going to start to go up, so the low temperatures will definitely go up over the next couple of days and perhaps a weak little shower or two. I shouldn't say a weak shower, a weak little dis disturbance bringing a shower or two by Friday. Wouldn't get really excited about that, unfortunately. Uh, 74 degrees today at noon with partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today up to 80 so still about five six seven degrees above normal that's going to be the situation maybe getting a little bit warmer as we go into the weekend and a shower or two is possible on friday i mean and don't even have it on the little graphic there hardly with any raindrops and then another cool front's going to come through monday we will be like i said warm and humid over the weekend but that front comes through here and that's going to cool us uh, down actually at or a little bit below normal by Monday and Tuesday, which will be very nice. A good break. Yes, indeed. Looking forward to it. Thank you. 451, 64 degrees. And still ahead, the latest move to get people back in theaters. How one major movie chain is launching a program to let you rent its theaters for private parties. Your pick three numbers this morning, 214 Fireball 1. Daily 4, 8808, same Fireball. Cash 5, 17, 23, 28, 29, 34. And your Mega Millions, 23, 45, 53, 58, 62, Mega Ball 13, Mega Flyer 5. Good luck. The Country Music Awards are tonight on ABC, plus AMC wants you to rent out its movie theaters with your friends. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It's been a tough week for the Good Doctor star Richard Schiff, who says he and his wife, actor Sheila Kelly, are battling COVID-19. He writes in a tweet that he was diagnosed on Election Day, that he and his wife, quote, are determined to find a way to health again. And they're rooting for everyone out there struggling with this thing. The Good Doctor just returned to TV last week with the first couple of episodes focusing on the pandemic. With coronavirus cases surging, perhaps you don't want to sit in a theater with a bunch of strangers to watch Tenet. So now AMC is launching a program to let you rent its theaters for private parties, up to 20 people, and you get to pick the movie. Older movies will start at 99 bucks. New movies might cost as much as $349, which would come out to about 17 bucks per person. Other chains have been doing this for a little while now to try and increase cash flow during this really difficult period. Time to get your country on. Tonight, it's the CMA Awards on ABC. Miranda Lambert leads all nominees with seven nods. For the coveted Entertainer of the Year Award, she's up against Carrie Underwood, the first time two women have competed in the category in 20 years. They're nominated alongside Eric Church, Luke Combs, and Keith Urban. And happy birthday, Leo. Oscar-winning actor Leonardo DiCaprio is 46 today, while actress Demi Moore is 58. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Uh, Marcus, were you aware you shared a birthday with the Leonardo DiCaprio? And Demi Moore. No, I was not. Hmm, things you... <laughs> 
go, hmm, to <laughs> 456, 64 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, vowing to get right to work, President-elect Joe Biden shrugging off President Donald Trump's refusal to accept the election outcome. If you have one of those ring doorbells, we have some important information about a recall that might save your home from a potential fire threat. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. President Trump is still refusing to concede this election, his administration withholding transition resources. But Joe Biden says that won't slow his transition down. I'm Alex Bershay in Wilmington, Delaware. I'll have details coming up. And outside with live cam, great shot looking back towards the Tower of the Americas downtown. We had a little cool front move through the area yesterday. And this morning you may walk outside and say to yourself, hey, that's not half bad. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is November 11th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad for Veterans Day. So thank you for your service. Thank you for everybody that has served right now. It is 63 degrees and obviously the humidity is not as much of a factor this morning, Mike. No, not at all. And that has allowed temperatures in the hill country, especially to drop down. We're looking at the readings that are almost 20 degrees cooler in the hill country right now. We're still not down to anywhere near where we should be. We're still about 10 degrees above normal as a matter of fact. But again, with that dew point down to 42 degrees, and such low humidity that does make a whole lot of difference. So a light jacket's not a bad idea, and I still think we're going to continue to drop down in the next couple of hours and then rebound way above normal again. We'll still be anywhere five, six, seven degrees above normal, getting up to 80 again today. We're going to be sticking around there for the next uh, few days. And as far as the uh, aquifer, it did go down yesterday's reading three tenths of a foot and the allergens just have a little bit of mold that's showing up in the atmosphere right now. OK, so we've got some dry air down here at the surface. And then also once again, we still have very dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, that darker shade of gray. And so what that means is we are going to be seeing some really, really blue skies later on today. Uh, a couple of morning clouds, like I said, that's the one little kind of glitch as far as you like to have very dry air, which we have light wind, which we have and completely clear skies. And that's the perfect ingredients for radiational cooling. But we do, like I said, have a couple of those clouds out there which may try to help hold temperatures a little bit milder than what they actually could drop down to. So partly cloudy skies, chilly, especially in parts of the hill country. I'll show you those numbers coming up in a minute. Nice. But yes, warm, like I said, up to 80. And then we are going to start to see more uh, humidity come back in here as we go in through the weekend. Perhaps a shower on Friday, one or two of them, not really a big deal. Got another front, though, coming in here for next week. Details in just a few minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is the birthday boy. Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mike. And right now, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, traffic still looks great. So uh, not too um, not too much out there in the ways of uh, anything obstruction, any type of obstruction to slow you down. 21 at Hildebrand still looking great with no vehicles out there. Very few at I-35 in Ritterman. And that's going to change here in about an hour, an hour and a half. 37 at Jones, north and southbound lanes. No delays, no vehicles. And uh, we take a look at one more camera. If it'll change for us, there it goes. 410 at Evers. So far, no problems there. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. A chase on the southwest side has left a San Antonio police officer and a teenager in the hospital this morning. The two crashed into one another as officers pursued the suspect after they say she stole a truck. Sarah Costa is live downtown. What we know about how that chase started. Sarah? Good morning. Well, it started with two teenage girls on the southwest side in the 1900 block of couples in that parking lot. When witnesses called police saying that one of the girls broke her leg, trying to prevent the other one from taking her truck. And that's when the suspect, the other teenage girl, took off in that truck. Police said they responded to the scene around 830 last night for an assault in progress. And when they got there, they spotted the truck on Rose Lawn Road and attempted a traffic stop. The suspect in the vehicle did not stop and a supervisor authorized the officer to pursue the truck, police say. Officers chased the truck down to the intersection of Couples Road. The pursuit ended at Old Pearsall Road in West Military when the suspect crashed into a responding officer headed down the opposite way of traffic, police say. Officials do not know the relationship between the two teenage girls. Now, the officer is expected to recover from his injuries. He has non-life-threatening injuries. Still in the hospital this morning. As for the suspect, that teenage girl, she is still in critical condition. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah.
It's been four days since ABC News projected Joe Biden as president-elect, and so far there's still no concession from President Donald Trump. And now Biden is forging ahead as many Republicans continue to back the president's claims the election was stolen. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest. This morning, President-elect Joe Biden is trying to reassure the American people that Trump won't derail his transition. So, uh, we don't see anything in slowing us down, quite frankly. He's forging ahead, even though the president still refuses to concede and insists we will win. I just think it's an embarrassment. Though active on Twitter, President Trump has largely been out of sight since election night, last speaking publicly on Thursday. He went golfing over the weekend. His legal team's been filing long shot challenges contesting the election, but they've yet to provide any evidence of widespread fraud. His attorney general, Bill Barr, has instructed the Justice Department to pursue substantial allegations of voting and vote tabulation irregularities. Even as Barr admits, none have actually emerged. The president's administration and many top Republicans still steadfast in supporting him. Have you congratulated Vice President Biden yet? No. Why not? Have you thought it all about? No. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo even saying this when asked about preparing for a smooth transition. There will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. Pompeo later on Fox declining to say whether or not he was serious. I am very confident that we will have a good transition, uh, that we will make sure that whoever is in office on noon on January 20th has all the tools readily available. Despite that message from the country's top diplomat, world leaders have already called to congratulate President-elect Biden. I'm letting him know that America's back. As the General Services Administration continues to withhold transition resources from the Biden camp, the president-elect's team insists that won't hold them back. Biden expected to meet with transition advisors later today. Alex Perche, ABC News, Wilmington, Delaware. There is a new COVID-19 testing site that will be opening today. Community Labs will be administering tests at the AT&T Center from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for people who are asymptomatic. Testing will happen every Monday through Friday during those hours. Edgewood ISD is joining multiple districts around Bear County to participate in a mass testing for students and staff. Edgewood ISD already has several safety protocols in place, such as social distancing and screening for staff and in-person students. At this time, 33% of the students are learning in class, which is roughly 3,000 students. At the end of the day, it's about having a COVID-free safety environment, right? A safe environment for our schools. And so what we want is to be able to do this so that way when our students do come to our facilities, when our staff come onto our schools, they're going to be safe about the environment that they're in. Students will begin testing at 8 before going to classes. And the district says the goal is to have the testing available for the entire district. It is Veterans Day. We're honoring all of you. Many businesses and restaurants are choosing to honor our military service members with deals and discounts. We have a look at a few of them. So Great Clips is giving a free haircut today for veterans and active duty members. Non-veterans who get a haircut today can get a free haircut card to give to a veteran. Buffalo Wild Wings has a free order of 10 boneless wings and fries. CC's Pizza offering a free adult buffet for veterans with military ID as long as you get a coupon posted on their website. Krispy Kreme and Dunkin' are both offering a free donut and Starbucks is giving out a free tall hot brewed coffee for all veterans, active service members and their spouses today. Remember, you will probably be required to show your military ID or other proof of service. Again, this is just a fraction of the many deals veterans can take advantage of today. Many San Antonio based businesses and restaurants also showing their appreciation. You can find the full list right now on our website at ksat.com. And as always, we salute our veterans. Yes, we do. Time now is 508 and 63 degrees. More details uh, as Ring is recalling some video doorbells for potential fire hazard. Also next, as election results are officially finalized, many are still dealing with that post-election stress. Why doctors say it's a good idea to just avoid it. Well, we've sure tried, right? Yeah. Outside with live cam, less humidity, drier air. Yeah, cooler temperatures. We'll take 63 over, say, 73 degrees. We've been seeing some very warm mornings around here. Mike's full forecast is around the corner. The election has been a topic of conversation for nearly two years since Democratic candidates started announcing their intentions to run for president. And even though things are winding down, the residual stress from the election can still impact us. Erica Hernandez has some ways to help. 
We all saw election news all over the place. It was on the daily news cycles, Twitter feeds, live feeds. It was everywhere. And it may have been just about enough to push your sanity over the edge. But now it's all over. And as results are being certified in various states, Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris are now the president-elect and vice president-elect. America voted and a decision has been made no matter who you voted for. Dr. Ken Yeager, who leads Ohio State University's Stress, Trauma, and Resiliency Program, offers us a few ways to handle the election results, whether you are looking to take a healthy break from following politics or you are upset about a preferred candidate losing. Dr. Yeager says you should reconnect with friends and family, but in tangible ways. That means putting down social media and engage with your community and family members. If you can visit them in person, take time to schedule a coffee date or a meal. If you don't have that luxury, give them a call. Just send them a text. Commit to making a positive change in your immediate community and seek local change. If you have concerns or complaints about the political system, seek what actions you can take at a local level to implement change. Not only is it easier than changing the whole country, but you will see the impact yourself. And Yeager says the president of the United States often does not have the ability to directly impact your local community. He also says you should talk it out. If you have concerns about the election and if it is impacting relationship with family and friends, he says you should try and address it with them personally. He says if there are issues with economic or health issues, ask how you can help. Finally, Dr. Yeager says that we all need to understand that governing is more of a process than an event. Instead of feeling helpless, we can all become active members of the community and be a part of that process. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 513 and 63 degrees for now. And coming up, we've been chatting about it for a little while now. We have more information. We have details on that ring doorbell recall after several of them caught fire. Plus, a new study using mobile phone data revealing the locations of the highest risk of spreading COVID-19. I have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now, there's Sky Rizzi. Things are getting clearer. Yeah, I feel free. To bear my skin, yeah, that's on me. Nothing in me go hand in hand. Nothing on my skin, that's my new plan. Keep your skin clearer with Sky Rizzi. With Sky Rizzi, three out of four people achieve 90% clearer skin at four months. Of those, nearly nine out of 10 sustained it through one year. And Sky Rizzi is four doses a year after two starter doses. I see nothing in a different way. And it's my moment, so I just gotta say, nothing is everything. Sky Rizzi may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Before treatment, your doctor should check you for infections and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fevers, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or coughs, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Now is the time to ask your dermatologist about Sky Rizzi. In today's Tech Bytes, a massive recall for Ring. 350,000 of its second generation video doorbells are being pulled amid fears they may catch fire. The devices may overheat if an incorrect installation screw is used. At least 23 incidents have been reported. Cell phone data from nearly 100 million people in major U.S. cities paints a clear picture about the spread of COVID-19. Researchers say it proves 80% of virus infections stem from just a few places, including restaurants, gyms, hotels, and places of worship. Finally, about 2,400 NASA photographs are now being sold through an online auction. They trace the golden age of space exploration and they include a selfie from astronaut Neil Armstrong on the moon. The auction ends a week from Friday. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great Veterans Day. Right now it's 518 and I was just thinking about Marcus's birthday today. And it is of consequence that 5-0 is the big 5-0 today. Yeah. That would be you, Marcus. <laughs> Well, happy birthday. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I was hoping for my birthday we would have no accidents. Oh. But, you know, you just kind of roll with it. Uh, we do have an accident right now uh, being reported. 410 down here on the south side. So 410 down there, Palo Alto, Poti, Jordan Freeway area. So watch out for a number of emergency vehicles responding to this. It's been reported both on the main lanes and the access road. So as soon as officers get out there, we can uh, get a little bit more specific information as to exactly where that accident is. We'll bring you some additional information. 
Right now, 35 at Sun Monaco. So far, no issues for the north or the southbound lanes. And take a look at the interchange 35, 37. Things still look pretty good. So here in the downtown area, still have very, very light traffic. But we are starting to see some increases. 35 at Walsham. We had a beautiful crescent moon overnight, Mike Osterhage. Nice. Yes, indeed. It is following because we're, what, uh, almost a couple of weeks past mm -hmm. Halloween when mm -hmm. we had that full moon, that, that blue moon. And uh, the, I'm not sure about the sunrise today as far as the cloud cover. So we do have a couple of clouds out there as of right now. Uh, this was, I believe, the, the sunset and uh, <laughs> kind of poking fun at another or, or mentioning another uh, contributor that always sends in a lot of KSAC Connect pictures. No windmill in this shot, but still a beautiful, beautiful picture. Thank you very much for that. And uh, we're looking off to the east right now. That little dot right there is the uh, planet Venus. Oh, it's very cool looking. So obviously we don't have a complete cloud cover. Uh, just a couple of them out there, which may be helping to hold temperatures up slightly. I do still think we're going to be dropping down in the next couple of hours uh, just after sunrise this morning about 7 o'clock. Should reach our uh, one of our cooler temperatures. 63 right now, but then you've got 40s out in portions of the hill country, 55s at Bernie stage as well as in Bulverde. High temperatures yesterday after the front moved on through here. Some of the cloud cover helped to keep temperatures in the mid 70s closer to a normal high. And then today we are going to be getting up into the uh, 80 degree range. Now, as far as any any rain. Yes, we had a couple of sprinkles around here yesterday, and then we've got a couple of morning clouds uh, today, a lot of sunshine then, and in the afternoon we'll have some clouds uh, perhaps in the morning tomorrow and then going into tomorrow evening more sunshine. A few more clouds are going to be hanging around here on Friday, and there's a very, very small chance for one or two showers uh, around here. I wouldn't get really excited about that at all. I think a lot of us won't even see a shower or two on Friday, but that'll be sticking around in through the day. We keep a few clouds, especially in the morning hours on Saturday, Sunday, maybe a couple of more, and then there is going to be a front that tries to slide through here Monday, and that's going to knock temperatures down actually going into. So we'll be warm and a little more humid. Actually, humidity is going to start to work its way back in here by later on this afternoon, and then uh, we get rid of that humidity to start off next week. Cold temperatures, you can obviously make out where that front is and some colder air with clearer skies up there to the north of us, but that will continue to sweep off to the east. However, it will start to kind of uh, edge its way back up north, which is why we have the cool temperature this morning or cooler temperatures this morning, but it's not going to live very long because back to the warm humid conditions going into the weekend. 74 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today up to 80. We'll have more sunshine later on today and nice looking day. Humidity. It's still going to be comfortable, but you'll notice that it's starting to work its way back into the picture later on today. And then especially tomorrow, we're going to be staying 60 or even in the low 60s in many places. I did it again. I jumped past. I need to get my thumb off this thing. It's because it's a beautiful picture. So that's right. It's a beautiful. Thank you, Stephanie. The, and the back button doesn't go, go back. I'm waiting for you to spike that thing somebody's, on concrete. Somebody's garage door is going up. <laughs> I'm like, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you live in 78215 and eh, yeah, whatever. 522, 63 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, why the latest film from director Ron Howard is getting terrible reviews, even though it stars some Oscar winning Hollywood actors. Pick three numbers 214 Fireball 1, Daily 4 8808 Fireball 1, Cash 5 17. 23, 28, 29, 34. And your Mega Millions, 23, 45, 53, 58, 62, Mega Ball 13, Mega Plier 5. Good luck. 525 Today's Entertainment Report includes a film that seems destined for Oscar glory, or is it? CNN's David Daniel takes a look in the Hollywood Minute. You gotta think about these kids. What do you think I've been thinking about since I was 18 years old, huh? Never had a life where I wasn't thinking about the kids. Hillbilly Elegy is based on a best-selling novel directed by Oscar winner Ron Howard and stars Amy Adams and Glenn Close, who have 13 Oscar nominations between them. And the first reactions to the Netflix film are awful. One newspaper review called it an extended Oscar clip montage in search of a larger purpose. And many other reviews weren't that kind. You can decide for yourself when Hillbilly Elegy debuts in select theaters Wednesday and on Netflix November 24th. In times like this, we could all use an angel. Times Like This is the first single off Diane Warren, The Cave Sessions, Volume 1, the debut album from the legendary singer-songwriter. 
Darius Rucker handles vocals for the tune, which was released ahead of Veterans Day in partnership with the Wounded Warriors Project. The album arrives next year. Have you ever had a dream since you were a child and you couldn't let it go? So you put this gate between us. Has your dream made you happy or miserable? Here's your first look at Wild Mountain Time, starring Emily Blunt as an Irish farmer hopelessly in love with her oblivious neighbor, played by Jamie Dornan. John Hamm and Christopher Walken co-star in the romantic drama, which was written and directed by Moonstruck screenwriter John Patrick Shanley. Wild Mountain Time hits theaters and VOD December 11th. Far from the Emerald Isle in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That hillbilly elegy looks odd. Well, I thought it looked interesting. I mean, it's a great cast. Maybe it's just good previews. So we're not going to see it? I don't know. And we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. 527, 63 degrees. And for the third time since 2012, the Affordable Care Act brought before the U.S. Supreme Court. More details on what's next in the case. Plus, ever thought of just quitting social media altogether? Everybody say, I. Mm -hmm. We have several good reasons behind why you should and what happens if you do. Plus, something new to get at the store. Pringles is adding a spicy kick to its classic lineup. Five thirty. Happy Veterans Day. We salute all of you. It is Wednesday, the eleventh. Thanks for joining us, and yes, thank you for your service. A uh, pretty nice day when you step out in the morning. Yeah, it's almost refreshing this morning compared to the last couple of mornings, Mike Oster. Hey. Yeah, when you get rid of all the humidity, that does make it a lot more uh, refreshing. Now, temperatures are still on the warm side. We're still about um, ten degrees above normal right now at sixty-three. Normal low is fifty-two, but that uh, that dew point, the measure moisture in the atmosphere. That has dropped down significantly from yesterday. As a matter of fact, 24 degrees lower than what it was yesterday. So, you know, do the math. We were up to 66, which, yeah, that's very, very humid. And two points have even dropped down. I'm about to sneeze. Pardon me. Uh, 27 degrees lower in Rock Springs. 30 lower. <laughs> in uh, junction and uh, mold. Maybe that's what's making me sneeze is on the the low side uh, this morning and throughout the rest of today. We are going to see a lot more sunshine. Got a couple of clouds hanging around there this morning and even though we have very light wind, dry air, those couple of clouds may be trying to keep temperatures up um, from getting as cool as what they could be, but we will see a nice big warm up and getting up into the uh, upper 70s and uh, close to 80 later on today with plenty of sunshine around here, but also low humidity right now. That's going to start to go back up. So even though it's not going to be humid, humid by later on this afternoon, you will kind of start to notice it more. And also the next couple of days, got another front moving down. It's going to be a while, a few days to get here. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Marcus Trujillo, who is how old today? I don't know. I forgot. Okay. <laughs> that happens when you get this age, so. I, I, heard, I heard that's the first to go right now as you take a look at the roadways. Uh, no incidents except for this one rollover accident that we have down on the south side. The rest of the highways look great. However, westbound 410, so if you're headed from uh, Tweety 1, 37 area back over towards that 410, 35 interchange on the southwest side, first you have to make it past Palo Alto Highway 16, and that's where we have that roller accident currently in the clearing stages. Now, right now, 151 at 410. So far, no issues there despite the increases in the traffic, and I-10 Equilibra, upper and lower levels still look pretty good. Marcus Stephanie. All right, thank you, Marcus. Again, happy birthday, sir. As the coronavirus pandemic keeps spreading across the nation, there's another push to try to kill the Affordable Care Act. If the law is struck down, some lawyers say millions of Americans could lose their health care. CNN's John Lawrence reports. The U.S. Supreme Court hearing arguments over the Affordable Care Act. God save the United States in this honorable court. Trump administration lawyers and GOP state attorneys general say a 2017 congressional amendment that eliminates the penalty for failing to get insurance invalidates the law altogether. Lawyers supporting the ACA say Obamacare can't survive without that mandate. Chief Justice John Roberts appears to agree with the latter. I think it's hard for you to argue that Congress um, intended the entire act to fall if the mandate were struck down uh, when the same Congress that lowered the penalty to zero uh, did not even try to repeal the rest of the act. Justice Brett Kavanaugh, a Trump appointee, says Obamacare could survive if the amendment were removed. This is a very straightforward case for severability under our precedents, meaning that we would 
excise the mandate and leave the rest of the act in place. Legal analysts say comments like these make it appear that Obamacare is not in critical condition. It's a pretty good sign there are at least five votes, including Kavanaugh, the chief justice, the three progressives, to leave the rest of the ACA intact. That's going to be a big sigh of relief for millions of Americans. I'm John Lawrence reporting. TikTok petitioning a federal court to stop President Trump's executive order just a day before the deadline. The president said TikTok poses a national security concern and he's demanding its ban if it doesn't find new owners by tomorrow. Its parent company is ByteDance TikTok, says the president's order violates due process rights. The short form video app has more than 100 million users in the U.S. Today is Veterans Day, so we are honoring those who have served our great country. The observance is on the anniversary of the end of World War I, which happened at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. It was originally called Armistice Day, but was broadened to Veterans Day in 1954. There are an estimated 19.5 million veterans in the U.S. 535, 63 degrees. And still ahead, a look at how Pringles is turning up the heat thanks to a new spicy line of chips. Tired of the endless demand of keeping up with your social media accounts? Why not just cut the cord just ahead? What will happen if you decide to log off for the final time? I think you will survive. That's my guess. Yeah. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam. A cold 63 degrees. Not too bad out there. But we might get another chance at a cold front somewhere in the future. We're going to talk to, talk to Mike after the break. Five thirty-eight. Welcome back to CMSA. Social media can be magical when it comes to staying in touch with family and friends, but we all know, know that social media has a dark side too. As a result, many have turned off their Facebook, Snapchat, or TikTok accounts. And as Eric Ednathis tells us, there's several good things that can happen when you log off for the last time. While well, catching up with your friends and family can be a great part of social media, these days many popular sites are riddled with political agenda, shady information, and terrible comments, so why not cut the cord? According to psychologists, at least five things will happen to you when you do. First, you'll get more work done. According to an article published on TheHealthy.com, social media constantly interrupts us. Studies show that by being on social media while working can reduce your productivity by up to 40%. Cutting it out can make lots of time and you'll get done with work faster. Second, you'll get more sleep. We all know that just taking one last look at your account at night can lead to sometimes hours of mindlessly scrolling through feeds. Doctors say just spending one to two hours on social media before bedtime can lead to 15 hours a week of lost sleep. By putting the phone down, you can get that much needed sleep back and make yourself healthier by default. If you can't get to sleep, try reading a book. Finally, you'll feel less stressed. Since we have social media with us all the time, we feel the pressure or urge to keep up with what's going on. Doctors say that leads to an increase in the chemical in your brain called cortisol, which causes stress. More stress can contribute to reduced memory and even depression. Staying away from social media can make you feel calmer and more focused on things that really matter. Psychologists say staying off of Facebook and Instagram can get your creativity going again, make you more sure of yourself, and help you develop longer in-person relationships. Erica Fernandez, KSAT 12 News. And time now, it's 540 and 63 degrees for now. It's what may be under a lot of Christmas trees this year. Up next, a look at the newly launched Xbox Series X and how much it costs. And welcome back. It is 542. In your morning consumer headlines, the next generation of video gaming is here. Microsoft has officially launched its anticipated Xbox Series X. The console comes with a price tag of $499, which is the same as its previous generation Xbox One. Gamers willing to give up a disk drive to play disk-based games can opt for the Xbox Series S at a price point that is $200 lower. Sony is slated to launch its next generation console, the PlayStation 5, that's later this week. Pringles is turning up the heat, adding a spicy kick to three members of its classic lineup. It says Scorch and Cheddar adds an extra peppery kick. Scorch and Barbecue adds a pop of heat from cayenne pepper. And Scorch and Chili and Lime has a chili pepper bite. Pringles says these are designed to test the limits of snackers. The Scorch and lineup has a limited release in December, followed by a full release sometime next year. 
New research has found that people who eat chili peppers may live longer and be less likely to die from cardiovascular disease or cancer. The American Heart Association says researchers analyzed health and dietary records of more than 570,000 people in various countries. They found that individuals who eat chili peppers are 26% less likely to die from cardiovascular disease than those who rarely or never ate them. They're also 23% less likely to die from cancer. Researchers say the amount and type of chili pepper consumed changed among the study, so they don't know how much, how often, or which type may be associated with those health benefits. All right, so if you survive just eating the pepper, you will live a long, healthy life. Yeah, that's a good trade-off. McDonald's is known for its brand names like the Big Mac and Chicken McNuggets, but uh, as we've now told you here on GMSA, there's now the McPlant, the food, fast food chain's new meatless burger on the way. But the McPlant is getting McMocked, <laughs> CNN's Jeannie Mose explains. Remember when burger chains used to ask, Where's the beef? Well, lately it's been, Where's the plant? Even McDonald's announced it's sprouting a plant-based burger, which they plan to call the McPlant. The name is getting grilled. McPlant is the laziest name. McPlant is a pretty bad name. But what do you expect from the people who called their fish sandwich filet fish when quarter flounder was right there for the taking? People aren't whining about the taste of a meatless burger. McDonald's tested the concept in Canada last year with the makers of Beyond Meat, which gets rave reviews from YouTube chefs. Mmm. Mmm. That's insane. Wonderful. Less wonderful? McPlant. Mashable asks, can you think of a better name? Suggestions range from the big Unmac to McNotta Burger to Planty McPlant Face. Damn, Hamburglar must be pissed. Yipe. Actually, McDonald's first meatless burger got a short-lived trial run back in the 60s. The Hula Burger consisted of grilled pineapple slices with cheese on a toasted bun. Now that's way beyond even a Beyond Burger. What, you like them? I've never had my animals react to a veggie burger the way they react to these things. The McPlant will arrive in select McDonald's restaurants somewhere in the world sometime next year. Posted someone picturing me in 2021 enjoying my Pfizer vaccination with a quarter pound McPlant. You deserve a break today. Give us a break from McPlant. Make that McFacePlant. Genie Mose, CNN. Are this kitty cat approved? New York. Huh? What? Well played, Jeannie Mose. Yeah. Well played. <laughs> that was very funny. And that, that cat. I know. Makes you wonder. Was that guy making hamburgers on a walk? Mm, that was weird. Maybe it's tastier. Hey, if that's all you have, why not, right? That's true. 547, 63 degrees. How are things looking now, Officer Marcus Trujillo? Well, we still have that accent, but I have a question. Sure. Mm -hmm. is. Okay, so quarter pounder and then McPlant. Okay, if it's made of a plant. How big does it have to be to weigh a quarter of a pound? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks, I don't uh, know. This, does that look like a really, really small burger? The video mm. looks pretty small of yeah. the McPlant. Isn't that kind of like what weighs more, a ton of bricks or a ton of feathers? Wouldn't it be just a quarter? No, no, pound? how big would it have to be <laughs> on your plate to get a quarter of a pound? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we do have this uh, accident that's in the clearing stages, westbound uh, 410, right there at Palo Alto College, or Palo Alto exit there. So that one is still in the clearing stages, but as far as trans guys concerned, you can see no issues there. 410 at Fredericksburg Road up on the northwest side. Moving on to uh, 21, 410 by the airport. Those connect ramps still looking pretty good. This way, Marcus. Oh, sorry. I was going to say oak weighs more than pine, so if it was made out of oak, it would be smaller than if it was made out of pine. Neither of which are in the McPlant, to our knowledge. Right. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> we have no idea what's in that thing. <laughs> let's see if, if never mind. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, No yeah. Shave November. Mm -hmm. It continues. Let it grow. Join the fight against cancer. Uh, boy, I haven't checked the totals this morning, but uh, we're, we're doing pretty well overall. Yeah, pretty good, especially Mark Austin. At yeah. the top of the leaderboard for uh, now. Justin yeah. Horn's there too. Mm -hmm. uh, for more information, go to ksat.com. Proceeds go to No Shave November, a number of charitable organizations and research uh, facilities fighting cancer, including St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Speaking of furry things like us and the pets, 
They're a lot more cuddly. We want to tell you about pet needs home over there at the Animal Defense League. Naco's four year old American pit bull mix, bull terrier mix, currently the longest stayed resident. Two years he's been there at ADL. They take good care of him, but he just wants a, you know, a couch and to flop on. And he's an active boy, loves to play fetch. Huge fan of playing in the water. He needs his humans. Aww. Needs a yard, too. Spoiled a nice and fenced to be yard. The only, yeah, to be the only fur baby there. Nako's adoption fee is waived <laughs> since he is considered a diamond in the roughs. No. Get it? In diamond in the roughs? I get Rough. it. So, Very cute. And, and again, the adoption fee is waived. And, you know, make a, a donation if you would like to. They could appreciate it. But just take him home. Look at that thing. He'll, he'll keep you going. Go for a jog with him. Yeah. Play in the backyard. Over there at the Animal Defense League, head on over 11300 Nacogdoches. 655-1481 is the number to call. Big boy. Yes, he looks very cute out there. All right. We had uh, a lot of clouds hanging around here yesterday, but some of the rays of sunshine were trying to peek on through there. Beautiful picture. Thank you very much for that. And... Mm, we're not seeing anything. We still got about uh, an hour before the sun comes up. So maybe in about 15, 20 minutes, we'll start seeing a little glow of the, uh, the sunrise. But we do have a few clouds out there this morning. Temperatures, uh, New Braunfels 64, and we've got some uh, mid upper 50s there, Seguin and Pleasanton. So we're still well above normal by oh, almost 10 degrees above normal here in town. There is a this is the storm that just won't die. I mean, remember, it hit Central America, took a right hand turn, went across Cuba into Miami, took a left hand turn. Now it's making a right hand turn again, and that is going to be taking it uh, back. It's still a tropical storm strike that's going to be taking it back across the northern portion of Florida should regain hurricane strength. It's been going back and forth, obviously. And remember, at one point when it made landfall, it was a category four storm down there in Central America, and that will just continue to cut across. Florida and then back out into the Atlantic Ocean and the way it's been going, who knows what it's going to do once it gets back out there, but it will continue as it looks right now to head off into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So we've got a few clouds hanging around and if you kind of squint, you can see some of these low clouds that, that show up right there as that loops on through and then around the country. Yeah, there are a few areas, obviously some rain well off to the east and then that's going to be uh, added to, especially down there in the southeast with Ada and then snow up to the north with those very, very cold temperatures. And here's really the dividing line with the, the cold air and the warmer air. Yes, we've gotten a little bit of a taste of it in here, but it's not going to last all that long. As a matter of fact, here at the surface, humidity is going to start to work its way back in here by later on this afternoon. Not that it's going to be oppressively humid today, but by tomorrow morning, it's going to feel a whole lot different around here. We may have to deal with a little bit of fog tomorrow morning as well. And then going into the weekend, you know, there's the really cold stuff. Yeah, it does sweep through the Great Lakes, but that stays up there to the north of us. Now, by Monday, there is a little bit of a front that will slide on through. But again, we're not seeing these upper level wind lines dropping straight down out of Canada. That's what we like to see when you get the really cold stuff around here. So we keep pretty much the same configuration, even going in through a good chunk of next week. Rain, perhaps a shower by Friday, but wouldn't really count on it too much. 74 degrees, partly cloudy skies today at noon. Then a high temperature today, a nice looking day, 80. So we're still going to be about, uh, what, six, seven degrees above normal. That's going to be the situation in the next few days. But of course, the difference being the low temperatures will be staying up there in the uh, mid 60s as we go in toward the weekend. A couple of showers are possible Friday. Not very likely, though, and then warm and humid all the way through Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we get that next front moving down through here. So that will knock the humidity out of here and be a nice little taste of fall going into uh, Monday and Tuesday. It's what you've been waiting for, Mike. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Finally, we can wear a jacket again, maybe yes. for a, a day or two. Day or That's two. fine. <laughs> That's how it goes around here, right? Yeah. 552, 63 degrees on your Wednesday morning. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, two, one, four, fireball one, daily four, eight, eight, zero, eight, fireball one. Cash five, 17, 23, 28, 29, 34, and mega millions, 23, 45, 53, 58, 62, mega ball 13, mega plier five. The season of giving is upon us, and one thing that people might take for granted is a good pair of shoes. That's why this month, our KSAT community partners, Zapatos and SAPD, are partnering up for the annual Share of the Shoes drive. If you'd like to make a donation, drop off new shoes at any SAP substation through November 30th, or you can make a donation online. You can find all this information at ksatcommunity.com. 
KSAT web team making a list and checking it twice, all part of our preparation for Santa's visit ahead of the holidays. List lays out different locations families can get a photo with Mr. Claus. Because of the pandemic, of course, there are extra precautions like making reservations. You can check out the list on KSAT.com. Hey, today on GMS 8 9, we're learning a little bit more about how plants work in Katie's science lab. Katie Blake will guide us through the cabbage water movement experiment. To follow along, you will need cabbage, lettuce, or celery, clear jars or containers, water, and food coloring. To Miss Katie Science Lab, today at 9, after Good Morning America. With much of our lives interwoven by the web, it can be difficult to know just how much of your data websites collect. Just ahead on GMSA, we'll show you how you can download your data and protect it in the future. And Transkai, there's 10 at De Zavala, 281 at 410. Marcus will get you updated on our commute and another peek at the Wednesday forecast with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. A San Antonio police officer and a teenage girl are in the hospital this morning recovering after a chase that started as a robbery. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, we'll tell you how this all unfolded. Edgewood ISD will start testing all students and teachers for COVID-19. The first high school in the district is expected to start doing so this morning. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a cool 61 degrees. Yeah, the humidity is lower, so we'll take it for now. We're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your week. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is November 11th. Happy Veterans Day. Yes, happy Veterans Day, and thank you for all your service. We appreciate it. Here in Military City USA, we salute you every day, but particularly today. We're also going to be talking about Officer Marcus Trujillo's big birthday today, the big 5-0. We'll be talking about that coming up. But for now, let's go ahead and check in with Mike about this nice cool morning we're having. Yeah, we had the front move through yesterday. Yesterday morning was a whole different story, but now it's, it's nice. It's not well, here in town, not chilly, not cold, mm -hmm. but in the Hill Country, it definitely is. And it feels so much better with that lower humidity out there. And we're not seeing any glow. Uh, well, maybe a hint of a glow of sunrise I'm trying to come up here. Sun's going to be going coming up in about uh, 45, 50 minutes or so. We do have a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning. Some of the temperatures, 49 Kerrville, 46 in Fredericksburg. So, yeah, definitely jacket weather in parts of the Hill Country. But here in town, Mm, light jacket, perhaps, although we have continued to slowly but steadily drop down. Uh, we dropped another two degrees in the past hour, and I think we continue down into the 50s before we start our warm up. Mold is on the, uh, the low side this morning. And as far as temperatures, I'm going for 54 degrees, so maybe kind of pushing things. That would be here in town, obviously much cooler in the hill country. And then, yes, once the sun comes up, we warm up nicely. Wind is going to be kind of swinging around out of the, the east to southeast a little bit more. Seven 24 at noon, still going to be a pleasant day, although at noon we're already at our normal high temperature, then we top off at 80. So, yes, we are going to be on the warm side today. Also, even though it's not going to get really, really humid, the humidity is going to start to work its way back in here. So by tomorrow, it's going to be a whole different uh, situation around here as far as the humidity is going to be concerned, and that's going to last through the weekend. Another front, though, to start off next week. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now, and we love all of our folks in blue, especially the birthday boy here. Hey, Marcus. Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you. And um, unfortunately, though, we do have an accident, so we're hoping for no accidents today. However, that's not the case. We do have that rollover accident still in the clearing stages. We're going to go moving down to uh, westbound 410 down there by Palo Alto right there, Highway 16. So watch out for a number of emergency vehicles still clearing that major accident. Now moving on to Trans Guide 21 to Hildebrand. So far, no issues for the north or the southbound lanes. And take a look, 35 at Pine. So far, no increases in traffic just yet. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. A teenage girl in what's believed to be a stolen truck led officers on a chase last night on the southwest side. Now she is in critical condition. This after she crashed right into a San Antonio police officer's vehicle during the chase. Our chase, rather. Sarah Costa has the latest information.
Good morning, and at the latest check, that officer is going to be okay. He suffered non-life-threatening injuries as he's recovering at the hospital this morning. Police say they got called out to this incident around 8.30 last night in the 1900 block of Couples Road. It started with two girls. One of them stole another's truck, allegedly, in the parking lot. Police say they were called out to that area for an assault by witnesses. The victim's leg was broken as she tried to keep the suspect from taking her truck. Officers spotted the truck on Roselawn Road and attempted a traffic stop. The suspect in the vehicle did not stop, police say, and a supervisor authorized the officer to pursue the truck, according to police. Officers chased the truck down to the intersection of Couples Road. The pursuit ended at Old Pearsall Road in West Military when the suspect crashed into a responding officer headed down the opposite way of traffic, police say. Police do not know the relationship between the two teenage girls. They say that the officer has been with SAPD for two years. From downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a shooting on the city's west side that left one man in the hospital. It happened just after one this morning on Petranco Road near Highway 151. Police say they know it happened at a car wash, but the victim would not give any more information. That victim was shot in the leg and is expected to recover. Meanwhile, police continue to search for that shooter. This morning, police looking for this man currently missing 70 year old Roger Robertson last seen just before noon yesterday his home in Center Point in Kerr County. He's about 5'9", last seen wearing glasses, a flannel sweater and black pants. He drives a Ford F-150 pickup with the license plate of BW05271. If you know where he is, call the Kerr County Sheriff's Office. That number is on your screen right there at the very top, 8308 nine six one one three three. Local health officials are reporting 332 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. The recent increase in cases starting to see the seven day moving average increase, which is now at 239 cases per day. No new virus related deaths were announced in the daily briefing yesterday. 306 patients are currently in the hospital with 128 in the ICU and 57 on ventilators. 61 of those patients are from El Paso. Meanwhile, Mayor Ron Nierberg will continue to self-quarantine after coming in contact with a person who tested positive for COVID-19. San Antonio's mayor tweeted last night that he took a test and the results came back negative. He says the contact with the person was brief and he was wearing a mask at the time. Nierberg also says he will continue to self-quarantine and follow public health guidance. He says he will conduct business and public meetings remotely. There is a new COVID-19 test site opening today in San Antonio. Community Labs will administer the test at the AT&T Center from 10 this morning until 2 in the afternoon. These sites, these tests, excuse me, are for people who are asymptomatic. They will run the testing at this location every week, Monday through Friday during those hours. Community Labs also behind the initiative offer, ma offer mass testing to students and teachers here in Bear County. Edgewood ISD joining many other districts to get everyone in the schools tested. At this time, 33% of students are learning in class, which is roughly 3,000 students. District says with increased testing and safety guidelines, it hopes it can give parents peace of mind. At the end of the day, it's about having a COVID free safety environment, right? A safe environment for our schools. And so what we want is to be able to do this so that way when our students do come to our facilities, when our staff come onto our schools, they're going to be safe about the environment that they're in. Testing will kick off at 17, 715 this morning for staff at Somerset High School. Students will begin testing at 8 before going to class. The district says this will have the testing available for the entire district very soon. And across the nation, nearly 62,000 people are in the hospital with COVID-19 right now. That's more people in the hospital than any other time since the pandemic began. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details. This morning, ICUs across the country say they're crippled by a crush of patients as pandemic-related hospitalizations hit an all-time high. We need help. We're short nurses. New data revealing 40% more people are now hospitalized with COVID than just two weeks ago. They're absolutely just overwhelmed. It's been insane. It's been, this is what we were fearing.
Massachusetts is now preparing field hospitals. California is rolling back reopenings. And Vermont is requiring all travelers to quarantine even if they test negative. Despite new efforts to control the spread, the U.S. on Tuesday saw its highest number of daily cases ever, with more than 130,000. All 50 states are now reporting infections on the rise. Texas now seeing nearly 11,000 new cases per day. Wisconsin is seeing positivity rates tick past 30 percent. Doctors in the state saying new cases have quadrupled and patients are sicker than ever. We're having to employ more advanced um, therapies for people on ventilators. Major sports programs are also feeling the effects of the latest surge. Texas A&M and Auburn football teams are reporting dozens of new cases derailing the season. On the front lines, workers are fearing the worst as we hit the height of flu season. I don't know. Are we going to have enough rooms? Are we going to have enough vents? I don't know. But White House officials say help is on the horizon. I would say by April you'll be able to be vaccinated. The government says it's ready to distribute 20 million doses of the vaccine as soon as it's approved. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. And one country on the list to get the vaccine is Australia. According to the Australian National Health Minister, the country had secured 10 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine. The Australian government has given pre-approval for the Pfizer shots and wants to fully approve the vaccine in January. The nation has reported more than 27,000 coronavirus cases since the beginning of the pandemic. Nine minutes past the hour, 61 degrees. Although the NBA season just ended, the Spurs will start playing again in a couple of months. We're going to tell you the details on the upcoming season. Less than a couple of months. And with the election now behind us, finally time to start processing that post-election stress. Ways to calm yourself down after the break. In the meantime, stress away. Guess away. <laughs> well, we don't have to stress out. We have 61 degrees, not bad outside. Uh, low humidity, so go ahead and enjoy that. May not need a jacket here in the downtown areas, maybe just the hill country. We're going to go ahead and check in with Mike after the break. 613, the election has been the topic of conversation for a couple of years now since Democratic candidates started announcing their intentions to run for president. And due to the pandemic and the changing ways in which Americans are voting, election day turned into election week. And although we can take a deep breath, the residual stress from the election can still impact us. Eric Hernandez has ways to help relieve that post-election stress. We all saw election news all over the place. It was on the daily news cycles, Twitter feeds, live feeds. It was everywhere. And it may have been just about enough to push your sanity over the edge. But now it's all over. And as results are being certified in various states, Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris are now the president-elect and vice president-elect. America voted and a decision has been made no matter who you voted for. Dr. Ken Yeager, who leads Ohio State University's Stress, Trauma, and Resiliency Program, offers us a few ways to handle the election results, whether you are looking to take a healthy break from following politics or you are upset about a preferred candidate losing. Dr. Yeager says you should reconnect with friends and family, but in tangible ways. That means putting down social media and engage with your community and family members. If you can visit them in person, take time to schedule a coffee date or a meal. If you don't have that luxury, give them a call. Just send them a text. Commit to making a positive change in your immediate community and seek local change. If you have concerns or complaints about the political system, see what actions you can take at a local level to implement change. Not only is it easier than changing the whole country, but you will see the impact yourself. And Yeager says the president of the United States often does not have the ability to directly impact your local community. He also says you should talk it out. If you have concerns about the election and if it is impacting relationship with family and friends, he says you should try and address it with them personally. He says if there are issues with economic or health issues, ask how you can help. Finally, Dr. Yeager says that we all need to understand that governing is more of a process than an event. Instead of feeling helpless, we can all become active members of the community and be a part of that process. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 615, what do you say we check back in with the birthday boy? Yeah, how's it looking, Officer Marcus Trujillo? 
So far, not too bad. We did have that one accident down there on the south side. That has cleared up. 410 uh, there by the airport, 281, 410. You can look at those connector ramps. More than enough room out there. So currently, no delays in anyone's travel times. That's the great news. 281 at Grayson travel north and south. I'm moving along fairly well with no problems here. 21 at the quarry. So hopefully we can make it the rest of the morning commute without any accidents on the highways. We sure hope so. Boy, uh, Steph was sweet enough to bring in breakfast tacos this morning for the team for uh, Marcus's birthday. So kind of covering my tracks there since I forgot to bring them in about a week or so ago. Uh, I got you. I, got I know you. I'm not off the hook. <laughs> I'm aware. I know I'm not off the hook. It's a special birthday for Marcus. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Are there any left? That's an, that's an yes. angel to your, to your left. Mr. Austin. I am aware. Mm -hmm. I'm you. quite aware. Aww. Yes. Angels to my left, devil to my right. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till they take the full shot of me and Marcus comes out. Anyway. Start me uh, a record. <laughs> Start me a record. <laughs> if you, <laughs> as you uh, get ready to head out the door this morning, temperatures now, it depends obviously on where you live out in the hill country. It's much cooler. And here in town, we are at uh, 61 degrees. I think we'll continue to drop down a few more notches in the next uh, couple of hours. And then later on today, good looking day, lots of sunshine, but it is definitely going to be on the warm side. And also, we will start to see the humidity begin its return. It's not going to be oppressively humid today. Tomorrow morning, different situation. Take a look at this picture. Absolutely gorgeous out there at Los Mables. And we've had a couple of uh, great shots of all the beautiful colors out there. And again, remember, if you're going to to any of the uh, state parks or any of the parks, make sure you check ahead online because a lot of them do require res reservations before you head on out there. You just can't just drop in unannounced. But wow, that's pretty. It's going to be a good weekend. Just take a nice little drive. All right, we've got a lot of clear skies out there right now. We did have some clouds earlier this morning. Uh, as you can see, a few of them may be along the horizon, but wow, what a beautiful picture. Sun's going to be coming up in roughly a uh, half an hour. As far as the uh, humidity, yeah, it's much more comfortable out there. And it's not really the situation well down to the southeast because that front that moved through is sort of stalled down to the southeast. So it's pleasant, nice morning, but watch what happens throughout the course of the day as the dew points come back up even by later on this afternoon. So still not oppressively humid, but kind of on the verge of it. So you'll sort of notice the 80 degrees a little bit more. And then by tomorrow morning, we're going to have a lot more uh, humidity around here with dew points well up into the 60s. And we may with that surge and that return of humidity overnight may actually be dealing with uh, some fog around the area tomorrow morning. So over the weekend, the humidity continues to stay on the warmer side. Uh, dew points are up there in the 60s. Then by the first part of next week, just drops off like a rock because we do have another hmm, somewhat potent front moving on through here uh, but during the day on Monday. So it'll hold low temperatures, hold temperatures, excuse me, into the low 70s on Monday, actually a little bit below normal by Monday. Around the country, obviously a lot of rain well off to the east. And yeah, that's snow in the higher elevations. No big surprise there, but it's all basically staying up there to the north of us. Got some really cold temperatures there. As a matter of fact, you can see where the latest front is lying, just about to move through the Mid-South and Mississippi Valley and continuing off to the east. And also with that front, that's going to be taking all that rain, pushing it off that way and taking the leftovers of Ada, which of course moved over the tip of Florida, now in the Gulf. It's going to go back over Florida, but that's just going to be shoved off into the Atlantic Ocean thanks to that front. So back to the colder air. And this is basically the dividing line right there, just about that green where those lines are a little closer together. And that keeps all that colder air up there to the north. We do have the weak front that's going to move through here uh, Sunday into Monday. By the way, a little disturbance may slide through on Friday, trying to give us a couple of sprinkly showers. Kind of doubt it, though. It's not going to be any big deal. We get that little drop in temperatures to start off the first part of next week. But as you can see, no you know, big drop in these upper level wind lines. You like to see them coming straight down out of Canada, and that really pulls in the really cold stuff. But that's just not in the offing in the next week or even couple of weeks. 74 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today up to 80 which is still about will already be above the normal high at noon. So we're going to be six, seven degrees above normal by later on this afternoon. We'll start to see the humidity works way back in here and you'll notice it a lot more tomorrow. And then as we go in toward the weekend, it's going to be warm and humid. A couple of showers possible Friday and that front moves through on Monday. It's going to be uh, kind of breezy on Monday as well and cooler temperatures. Finally, 
get out the jacket. I had mine out, but I was like, oh, next week. It, it looks good hanging there, doesn't it? Yeah, so, it's very nice. <laughs> gathering, very clean. Gathering <laughs> dust <laughs> in some places. Wear that. <laughs> 620, 61 degrees. And there are new concerns this morning after murder hornets were found in Washington State. Find out just how many have been found in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. When Panera's Chef Klaus makes a pizza, he doesn't just make a pizza. He uses fresh, clean ingredients to make a masterpiece. Taste our delicious new flatbread pizzas today. Panera. When you're through with powering through, it's time for Theraflu. Hot liquid medicine. Powerful relief so you can restore and recover. Theraflu. Hot beats cold. It's the last days of Macy's Veterans Day sale with our lowest prices of the season on furniture and mattresses like this leather sofa for $8.99 and a new bed just $7.89. Plus, get a free adjustable base with qualifying mattress purchase. Now at Macy's. Doing what we love can be painful. Introducing Asper Cream with Essential Oil. Now calming lavender oil is combined with fast-acting lidocaine for lasting relief. New Asper Cream with Essential Oil. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details from inside the murder hornet's nest. Experts making some surprising discoveries after eradicating the first Asian giant hornet nest in the U.S. Splitting open this tree and finding the nest to be 14 inches long. Inside, more than 500 of the so-called murder hornets, some of them still alive. They survived the scientists' initial efforts to kill them with carbon dioxide. Perhaps most chilling of all, they found as many as 200 queens in various stages of development. It really seems like we uh, got there just in the nick of time. If any queens had already left the nest, uh, it was just a few and very early. So what exactly does that many queens mean? We'll tell you what the experts are saying coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Los Angeles. And Ring is issuing a massive recall. 350,000 of its second generation video doorbells are being pulled amid fears they may catch fire. The device may overheat if an incorrect installation screw is used. At least 23 incidents have been reported. Cell phone data from nearly 100 million people in major U.S. cities paints a clearer picture about the spread of COVID-19. Listen to this. Researchers say it proves that 80% a virus infection stemmed from just a few places, including restaurants, gyms, hotels, and places of worship. About 2,400 NASA photographs are now being sold through an online auction. They trace the golden age of space exploration, and they include a selfie from astronaut Neil Armstrong on the moon. The auction ends a week from Friday. San Antonio Spurs will start the new NBA season December 22nd. The NBA Board of Governors approved the plan for a 72 game season last night after the league and players union reached an agreement two days ago. That means free agency will start November 20th, just two days after the draft and training camps will start December 1st. Take a look at this video. Time now 627 and 61 degrees. President, President Donald Trump could speak publicly today for the first time in nearly a week. All comes amid the transition between administrations, which is off to a rocky start. And your data is personal information, but it might be hard to figure out who has access to it. In our next half hour, we're going to see some ways you can protect it. And the birthday boy, Officer Marcus Trujillo, will be back with an update on Time Saver traffic on this Wednesday morning. We'll be right back. President Trump is still refusing to concede this election, his administration withholding transition resources. But Joe Biden says that won't slow his transition down. I'm Alex Brashay in Wilmington, Delaware. I'll have details coming up. Outside with live cam, beautiful shot of downtown, that sunrise glancing off the downtown buildings. We have a lot going on today. A break in the humidity. It is Veterans Day 2020. It is Officer Marcus Trujillo's 50th birthday. What else could we possibly squeeze in?
Uh, a lot of stuff today. Good morning. It is Wednesday, November 11th. And yes, thank you for your service to all the veterans out there. And we'll celebrate their birthday boy in just a moment. The big 5-0. But right now, here's Mike with a look at our forecast down to 61. Not bad. Yeah, we've been uh, kind of steadily, slowly, but steadily dropping down a little bit. We're still uh, almost 10 degrees above normal, much cooler in parts of the hill country. But what a beautiful, beautiful picture. Maybe a few clouds right there along the, the horizon. And uh, what really makes the difference, even though those numbers are, you know, well above normal, Normal right now, it's that number. The dew point is down to 44. It's about 25, 26 degrees lower than what it was at this time yesterday. And then, of course, we had that front move on through here. And we've got some 40s right now in the hill country. So big difference, obviously, from uh, southeast to northwest. And I think we still dropped down a few more degrees just uh, uh, up until right after the, the sun comes up this morning. And uh, there's those uh, dew point temperatures around there down well down into the 40s. That's not going to last, though, forever because we'll start to see those numbers coming up throughout the day so it won't be oppressively humid this afternoon but you kind of notice the humidity a little bit more and then tomorrow is going to be a whole different situation uh, mold is on the low side as of right now so partly cloudy to mostly clear skies chilly coolish chilly especially out in the hill country and then uh, lots of sunshine today nice but yeah it is going to be on the warm side so we'll be up to 80 that's still about six seven degrees above normal and then going through the rest of the, uh, the weekend to the weekend warm more humid humidity is going to stick around through the weekend couple of showers are possible Friday. I kind of doubt that a little bit. And then another front's going to move through here to start off next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And yes, the birthday boy. <laughs> Mrs. Trujillo's favorite son. <laughs> I'm sure your father doesn't agree with that, but hey. Probably not, but you know. <laughs> after, the, after the gift he gave me this weekend. Right. <laughs> can, can you please share, do you mind explaining that? Yes, he gave me a rock with, uh, carved on the rock was a certificate of live birth with my uh, date of birth on there, so. <laughs> it's the thought that great, counts. Great joke. Right now, Paybacks are tough, little brother. So. <laughs> right now, as we uh, actually, I'm going to have it sitting on my desk at work. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, still doing pretty good. We had that accident earlier this morning, but right now, traffic flowing great with no issues. 35 at Pine, you can see no problems all the way through 35 at San Marcos there, the north and south Pond lanes running smoothly. Uh, no problems there at the interchange, 35, 37. Just make sure you buckle up as you head out today. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. Four days after ABC News projected Joe Biden as the winner of the race for the White House, President Donald Trump has not acknowledged it or conceded the election. But as President-elect Joe Biden continues ahead with the transition, we could hear from the president today. ABC's Alex Brashe has more. Good morning. As all of this has been going on, keep in mind that we haven't heard President Trump speak publicly since Thursday. But all of that could change today as he has a public appearance scheduled for Veterans Day today at Arlington National Cemetery. This morning, President-elect Joe Biden is trying to reassure the American people that Trump won't derail his transition. So, uh, we don't see anything in slowing us down, quite frankly. He's forging ahead, even though the president still refuses to concede and insists we will win. I just think it's an embarrassment. President Trump has largely been out of sight since election night, last speaking publicly on Thursday. His legal team's been filing long-shot challenges contesting the election, but they've yet to provide any evidence of widespread fraud. His attorney general, Bill Barr, has instructed the Justice Department to pursue substantial allegations of voting and vote tabulation irregularities. Even as Barr admits, none have actually emerged. Many top Republicans still steadfast in supporting him. Have you congratulated Vice President Biden yet? Why not? Secretary of State Mike Pompeo even saying this. There will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. World leaders have already called to congratulate President-elect Biden. I'm letting him know that America's back. As the General Services Administration continues to withhold transition resources from the Biden camp, the President-elect's team insists that won't hold them back. Biden expected to meet with transition advisors later today. Alex Perche, ABC News, Wilmington, Delaware. And with 16 races still too close to call, the Associated Press reported the Democratic Party will have the majority in the U.S. House of Representatives for the next two years. Right now, the party holds 218 seats in the House, just over 50 percent. The AP projecting the Democratic Party to pick up a few more seats when all the votes are counted in some districts, but the majority did shrink from 20. 18. Meanwhile, the balance of power in the U.S. Senate will come down to runoff races in the state of Georgia. 
In other headlines this morning, the Hong Kong government has disqualified four legislative council members. The decision came immediately after Beijing passed a resolution allowing Hong Kong to strip politicians of their credentials. According to the bill, members who promote or support the Hong Kong independence claim, refuse to admit China's ownership over Hong Kong, and seek foreign interference will immediately lose their qualifications. New research suggests people who eat, eat chili peppers may live longer and be less susceptible to some diseases. American Heart Association looked at the diets of more than 50, I'm sorry, 570,000 people in various countries. They found that those who eat chili peppers had a lower risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer. However, they were not able to determine which chili peppers help the most or how many a person needs to eat. The association says more research is needed before making definitive conclusions. In your morning consumer news, there may be new trouble for Boeing. The Wall Street Journal now says the Federal Aviation Administration is considering new penalties against the plane maker over accusations of quality control lapses and management pressure on safety engineers. Those could add up to violations of a five-year-old settlement addressing safety oversight problems. It comes as the FAA is reportedly close to lifting the grounding of Boeing 737 MAX jets. TikTok petitioning the a federal court to stop President Trump's executive order just before the deadline. The administration says TikTok poses a national security concern and will ban the platform if it doesn't find new owners by tomorrow. The company says the order violates its due process rights. Makeup maker Ulta Beauty is expanding its presence. It's now signed a deal to open up its own store within a store in over 100 Target locations across the country. AMC theaters will now allow you to rent out a private theater. The company launched the program yesterday for all of its movie theaters. Price for one showing, $99 for up to 20 people. And you can rent one out to watch new movies for $149. AMC says its customers can book private showings on its website or mobile app. Whole Foods is offering Thanksgiving turkey insurance. If you mess up cooking your turkey, you could qualify to be reimbursed with a Whole Foods gift card. Caveat, you need to buy your turkey from Whole Foods and it is limited to 1,000 claims. The idea was prompted by pandemic restrictions forcing people to host smaller gatherings and in some cases having inexperienced cooks prepare the meal. Hmm. And today we want to wish every one of our veterans a happy Veterans Day. We thank you for your service. And if you're looking to celebrate, there are plenty of places around San Antonio that are offering some deals. All veterans and active duty members can get a free Rustic Burger from 3 to 11 tonight at the Rustic. And you can get a free Tavern Burger with the bottomless steak fries at Red Robin. If you're on your way to work, Quick Trip is giving out free coffee. You can stop by Santico's today for a free movie ticket. We have a full list of the deals around Military City USA on our website at ksat.com. And time now is 639 and 61 degrees for now. Much of our lives interwoven with the web. It can be difficult to know just how much of your data websites collects. After the break, we'll show you how you can download, download your data and better protect it in the future. 642, we've all heard the stories of companies data mining and Big Brother watching our every move online. But there are many questions about how much data is out there and how you can find out who has your information. Max Massey has the details on downloading your data. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, Amazon, Apple, Google. Social media has connected all of us in so many ways, but how much of your data does someone have? Look, this adds exactly what we said, you know? Like, I need something from but. Dollar Tree. Pops <laughs> up. Each social media app has a way for you to request your data. For Facebook, click Settings and Privacy, then your Facebook information. For Google, visit takeout.google.com. For Apple, visit privacy.apple.com. Simply follow the prompts and then wait for an email. You'll get a copy of every comment and every post you've made, every website you've visited, every real location you've logged in from, every online interaction you've had, your facial recognition data, targeted ads, lists of all your advertisers that have your information. You can just talk about something and it shows up on your phone. I'm not surprised anymore. <laughs> it happens all the time, so. The best way to protect yourself? Limit the apps on your phone. Consider using a VPN when browsing the internet on your computer, keeping most of the important information hidden. While a lot of companies make it easy for you to get a copy of your data, your archive doesn't show you everything. Sites like Facebook track your web and location history as much as possible and they won't find all your data requests downloaded. You can view your location history on Facebook by going to settings, location and click your location history. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News.
All right, 644, before we get to a traffic report, we have a special shout out today. That's right. Happy birthday to Officer Marcus Trujillo. Yay! Oh, hey. He's I remember that. Beautiful <laughs> kids. Yep. Introduce us, Marcus. That's, uh, <laughs> I like that's that not kid. one of his That's not my children. kid. <laughs> and your lovely wife. There's Chris and There's Jake. There's Chris and Jake and, and Kate. Kate. Yep. And he, Marcus has shown us pictures before that that is definitely a it's, little clone of Marcus. He looked just like that yes. when he was here. Mini so. me. There's the guys Aww. hanging out. Yeah, we do actually hang out outside of work. We like each other. <laughs> <laughs> and, I don't know about uh, that, but look we at that. hang out sometimes. Back right, uh, folks that watch TMSA may remember Detective Robert yes. Dart. Yeah. Still part of our gang. Nick's a, back there and Justin. Uh huh. Yes. A good yep. group there. Good but uh, group. happy birthday, Marcus, from everybody well, here you. at GMSA. And. There's two of my biggest fans right there. Aww. Love the pick. Beautiful kids. And now, unfortunately, time for the uh, traffic as we take a look. We do have an accident to tell you about. So this is on the southbound 35 uh, ramp to exit 4 Eisenhower. So watch out for a vehicle that struck that center median. The uh, accident we had earlier on the south side, that's cleared up and it's out of the way. 35, 37, the interchange so far, no problems there. And Take a look. This is... 35 at Walsham, close to where that accident is, but so far, no uh, real heavy traffic at this time. All right, I want to do a real quick reminder of No Shade November for links to our team to make a donation to all the guys letting it uh, grow this month. Go to KSAT Mark Austin on Facebook, and again, you can look for a link there for the entire team, make a team donation or individual donations, and we thank you, everybody that's donated so far. Of course, this is Veterans Day, and we want to give a shout out to some of our favorite veterans, and yes. we want to start off. Stephanie, will you please introduce us? <laughs> yes, this is my dad. This is Arturo Serna, and uh, he served many years ago He uh, in Vietnam, and uh, he, he passed away in 2013, so he is now buried at Fort Sam. What branch of the military was he Army. in, Steph? Army. Army. U.S. Army. Well, thank you for your service, sir. And this handsome gentleman. Yeah, that's uh, retired U.S. Air Force Major Bill Austin and my mom, Sherry. Thanks to my dad for serving as a pilot and then worked at recruiting service at Randolph Air Force Base and retired at the Pentagon out there in Virginia. Thank you again, Dad. And, and flew C C-5s in Vietnam? Uh, no, no, no. He did not. Uh, maybe towards the end of Vietnam. Okay. No, he flew rescue helicopters. Uh, in during the Vietnam War, then uh, tankers, and then wound up in the C-5 cockpit. Okay, and this picture, we've used this one before, my mom and dad, and my dad was in the uh, Navy, enlisted in the Navy toward the end of uh, World War II, and served for the, uh, the waning months of the war there. And, and I always like to talk about my grandfather, my mom's father, served in World War I. Wow. And guarded the, the White House. And Marcus also has relatives, didn't have any pictures, but uh, you have veteran relatives? Your brother was in yes, the service, my, right? Uh, well, it started off with my dad. My oh. dad re uh, retired Air Force. My uncle's retired Air Force. And then uh, both my brother and my sister. My sister's in the Army and my brother a Marine. A Marine. And their birthday was yesterday. 245 yes, right. years old. Thank you to everybody that has served. We salute you, our veterans. All those folks. Appreciate it. All right. Beautiful start to on this uh, Veterans Day. And uh, it's going to have some gorgeous blue skies today once again because we've got this really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. And, of course, we've got the dry air down here at the surface we were talking about with that front that moved through yesterday so it's much more comfortable out there but that's not going to last forever because dew points actually starting with later on this afternoon are going to start to work their way back in here tomorrow morning we will definitely notice it we may actually have to deal with a little bit of fog around the area tomorrow morning and we'll keep these higher dew points around going in through most of the week and there may be some fluctuations in the afternoons but then look at that just drops right off like dropping off a cliff the humidity and that's because we have another fairly potent front that's going to come on through here by the uh, first part of next week. And it's also going to knock temperatures down as well because, of course, we're going to be staying well above normal all the way through the weekend. So here's the uh, computer model going a little bit further into the future. We have some morning clouds, afternoon sunshine. Friday, there's a chance for a couple of sprinkly showers. Almost not even worth uh, mentioning. Uh, there'll be one or two of them around there and maybe lingering on into the evening hours. But again, that's going to be few and far between. And then we'll have clouds and sunshine, that uh, pattern going on in through the weekend. Maybe a few more clouds hanging around on Sunday. And then on Monday, that's when that next front is going to move on through here. And again, like I said, that's going to knock temperatures back down to actually a little bit below normal. So we're going to be 
just about normal, maybe a degree or two above it by noon already. Partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 80. So about six, seven degrees above normal. Still comfortable, but you're going to notice that the humidity is creeping upward as we go into the afternoon. And then tomorrow, yes, we will have more humidity around here. And like I said, maybe some uh, some fog uh, around the area as well as uh, Friday morning and then going into the weekend. Low 80s, mid 60s, but then that front comes on through here on Monday. It will be on, kind of on the breezy side and temperatures will be in the, uh, the low 70s. And again, that very small chance of a shower Friday. And thanks for the reminder to folks to take a shower on Friday. We appreciate that. <laughs> Right there on your seven day forecast. Yeah, that's almost what it's getting to because we ain't getting nothing from Mother Nature uh, these days. That's true. Yeah. All right. Don't forget, Steph. Right now, 650, 61 degrees. And only 1% of Americans have a perfect credit score of 850, but you don't need a perfect score to get the best rates. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to look at ways to raise your credit score. Outside with Live Cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up. You're watching GMSA on this Wednesday morning. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, 131,000 new cases of coronavirus reported in the U.S. in a single day. That is the highest since the start of the pandemic and a record of nearly 62,000 Americans currently hospitalized. We're also learning new details on how Pfizer plans to distribute its promising vaccine if it's approved. You'll see it coming up right here on GMA. The season of giving is upon us. One thing a lot of folks uh, might take for granted is a nice pair of shoes. It's why this month our KSAC Community Partners, which includes the nonprofit Zapatos and the San Antonio Police Department, are partnering for our annual Share the Shoes Drive. If you'd like to make a donation, you can drop off new pairs of shoes at any SAPD substation now through November 30th, or you can make a monetary, monetary don donation online. You can find all this information on KSACcommunity.com. Today on GMS 8 9, we're learning a little bit more about how plants work in Katie's science lab. So Katie Blake will guide us through the cabbage water movement experiment. That's right. To follow along, you will need cabbage, lettuce, or celery, clear jars or containers, water, and food coloring. And some kid right now is going, Mom, we need some cabbage. <laughs> and, and the parents what? like, what? I know, right? <laughs> exactly. Get the sauerkraut. Uh, don't miss Katie's science lab at 9 after Good Morning America. And let's take one last look at the roads with our birthday person, Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you. And as we take a look at the roadways uh, so far, 35, no problems from the south side all the way up through 35 at Walsham. But up there at Eisenhower, we have that accident on the clearance stages on the exit ramp. 151 at 410, you can see slight increases in the traffic, but currently no delays in anyone's travel times. Mike. Thank you, sir. And we've got uh, temperatures still holding at 61 here in town, but a lot of the surrounding areas down in the 50s, 54 Bulverde, Bernie Stage, and 40s out there in the hill country. And then look at that picture. What a beautiful start to this Veterans Day, Marcus's birthday. We've got a couple of uh, high clouds out there. That's pretty much about it. And uh, we're going to see lots of sunshine throughout the rest of today. Temperatures will make it up to 80 later on. So we are going to be on the warm side, like we're starting off on the warm side this morning. And then the humidity is going to come back the next couple of days. I'm just going to hang on this picture. I know it's glitching a little bit, but it's just so pretty out it there. Is. That shot looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. It, it kind of does. And we'll stay warm and humid through the weekend. And then another front moves through by the uh, first of next week. Or somebody blinking really hard. <laughs> That's, <true. laughs> That's, That's what the right. camera's doing. Yeah. Marcus, again, happy birthday from yeah. everybody here. Well, GMSA. thank you. And, and thank veterans, you. again, we salute you. Yes, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here at 9.